that um, there are even things I can learn from you. Um, I don't want this to be just me talking actually. I was telling Kike that I was hoping that it was going to be really Q&A because I find that when questions are asked, we get to deal with some specific matters uh, very quickly so that people don't just feel like they came, they marked register, and they went back home because there's so many of these sorts of conferences that I'm sure you've attended. And I'm certain you've heard many speakers from time to time tell you a lot. Also because the creative industry is, is like the focus of the world right now. It's a really great time to be a creative. So am I speaking to a room of creatives? Yes. So everyone here is a creative in one way or the other? Yes. Correct. Excellent. And I'm also in a room with Christians. Yeah. Answer, you know, answer, you see, creative, yes, Christian, yeah. You're not sure of your salvation. Yeah. You gave your life to Christ and took it back. <laughs> or you are just borrowing the light for a period because you're not really sure of what the Lord is doing with you. Eh? So, am I also speaking to a room of Christians? Yes! Yeah. Excellent. Christians born again, sanctified, you know, Bible carrying, tongue, um, tongue talking, demon chasing, foot stamping, head shaking, tambourine slapping. Okay, 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 that's okay. I just wanted to be sure, because it's always very important to understand your audience so that I don't um, talk above your heads. Um, so I would, I would just share a bit of my journey and a few lessons, and I would really like to take questions. I don't know if I'm breaking protocol. I don't know if there was a plan. Pastor Wally, is there a plan to take questions? Yes? Okay, okay. I would like to take questions because I'm also in a hurry because these work hours, but Pastor Wale, Yoruba, they say, what will be left? No one will. So um, I jumped many hurdles to make this window work. Now, and I literally just came, all the time I was talking to you, sir, early in the year, I was not even in the country. So anyway, we moved. Now, I've been working actively in the industry for about 17 years. Um, I was, I would say, fortunate is not the word. Because many times we, we, we try to compare journeys and time based on, oh, when I started or when I didn't start. And then you find that some people, you start to eliminate yourself or remove yourself from certain things because you feel, oh, you didn't start early or on time. And time is a, is, 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 is a weird concept, right? Even in scripture, one day is like a thousand days to the Lord, right? So it doesn't really matter when you start. When you start is your morning. All right, it doesn't matter your age. Never remove yourself from something because you think you're too young or you're too old. What matters is if you are on the right path and if you fully understand what God has called you to do. I think that is what is most critical. In fact, I know that is what is most critical. Because I started out really young, the one thing I tell people that was very instrumental to my career advancement was because I was born again. And you know, there's no funny way to say it. There is no cool way, walk way, politically correct way to say it. In my case, and you know, sometimes I think about it, I'm like, okay, maybe when I'm older, and somebody will say, tell us the seven steps to success. I'm like, some people are going to be quite disappointed because there's, there, 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 there are a handful of spiritual things attached to my journey, all right? And I make this very personal, right? So, because I cannot stand as an authority on the general, but I'm sure there are things that you can learn, which is why I'm here. So, when I got born again, I got born again in like 2002, at least serious born again, not rehearsal. <laughs> I got born again in 2002, 2003, there about, just as, about, as I was about to get into the University of Lagos. Uh, so by the time I started my first degree at the University of Lagos in 2003, I was born again, I was born again. I was praying in tongues. I, you know, I had received the Holy Spirit. So I had, you know, consciously walking with God. I'm saying this because as a creative, if you don't know your purpose, you're going to be very confused. And nobody can find your purpose for you. Unfortunately, it is that one assignment you have to find by yourself. It doesn't matter because people say, but oh, what's my purpose? I can't tell you your purpose. You have to find the purpose. Every, look, no, no human being is a mistake. You're not here by chance. There's a reason for that God has put you on the face of the earth. There are gifts and skills and talents that you have. Therefore, your purpose is something that is unique to you, something, but something you have to find by yourself. Now, the only way, in my opinion, the first way to start is by going to the one who created you. 
and asking the Lord to help you. So it is why I start with the foundation of being born again. Because being born again helps you to be like, okay, God, I really want to find out what my purpose is. So by the time you're now working with the Holy Spirit, you understand that the Holy Spirit is your friend, and you can ask the Holy Spirit questions like you ask anybody else questions. This is not a seminar on how to hear the Holy Spirit. That's a different thing. But you know, so you're like, okay, what are, what are some of the things I would say, like, what are the things you enjoy? What are the things you can do and not get paid for? It's important to get paid, but I'm going somewhere. What are the things that trouble you, that you want to, you know, that when you think about, you always want to solve those problems? You know, what are the things that come to you naturally? What are the things that give you sleepless? So, you know, you're asking, you're doing a list. I like to do lists, I like to journal, I like to write things down. It is said that creatives are not, don't like to document. We have to break that barrier, we have to stop it. We have to educate ourselves and educate our minds and put things down. Writing things down is also a spiritual principle. The Bible says, write the vision down so that they that see it might what? Run with it. So even for yourself. So what are the things I like? What are the things I like to do? What are the things um, that disturb me? What problems can I solve? What, you know, you ask yourself those things. The edge you have as a Christian is that you're saying, okay, Holy Spirit, help me to identify these things quickly. When I'm doing these things, help me to, okay, ah, this is it. Or help me to be in a place where I can showcase this thing. All right? Help me to be in a place where when I'm showcasing it, I'm in a room with the right people. Now, those are things that, that's how, that's how you now work with the Holy Spirit on that, right? And those are the things that I used to do. So, by the time I got into the University of Lagos, um, I was studying insurance. My first degree is in insurance. And I was a very confused teenager. I got into the University of Lagos quite young. Um, so, you know, you're filling your forms. I knew that I wanted to be in the creative arts, but my parents were not having it. I mean, the world is a lot more better and accommodating now, but my mom was like, what's a cut newspaper? You want to, like, you're not doing that. Sorry. So let's find you something else. You, and in all of this, I was praying, okay, God, you know, you're, you're still, I was still a very young Christian. I should have gone to the University of Lagos via diploma to study insurance. I knew, I knew that I wasn't going to work as an insurance broker. Like, it was so bad that I, I didn't make any friends in my class. I only spoke to one person. I was always in mass communication. All my friends, some of my lifelong friends, were my seniors in mass communication because that was where I was always spending my time. So in that, in those four years, and those four years really like for me, they were probably the best four years of my life. Best four years of my life because the, the people I met, the relationships I formed, the lessons I learned are still in play now. And so, but I was doing a lot of things with expression. So first off, I joined a fellowship, Sovereign Army Fellowship, one of the best fellowships. You know, joined Sovereign Army Fellowship, I was serving in Sovereign Army, I was singing in the choir, I was doing background vocals in the studios. So I, I, at least I knew one thing, I liked to perform. I had, I have a voice, I, I sing, I can perform. So what can I do with my voice? I speak well. So you know, I was like, okay, so I was doing a lot of things. I was doing, I used to do background vocals. I used to do voiceovers in studios. I used to, the only I wasn't doing background vocals for, you know, so by doing those things, I'm now exposed to people in that area. You know, you begin to now make friends in that area. And at that time, I really focused on money. Money is good and will come eventually, but you have to keep it about the work. So that was when I learned one of the lessons I tell everybody now. Always make it about the work. AKA, what can you do? Many people would send me a DM. I never send anybody a DM asking for work. They will not answer you. Except God has really ministered to them. Because my DMs, my DMs are full, right? So I say, I want to work with you. And my question is, why? Why should I work with you? I don't know you. I don't know if you're good. I don't know, I don't know you. Like, why should I? Oh, I met something. Please put me in your next production. Why? Who are you? Did you put Jack in your house? Why? Ah, give me a chance. Give me an opportunity. Ah, they don't want to give me a chance. Really? Chances are taken, not given. So why you? Let me tell you something. Chances are, I will pay attention to somebody who I see performing. Who does a monologue on their Instagram page. I'm more likely to pay attention to that person than you who's in my DM saying give me a chance and I'm feeling entitled. And at that point, you are not making it about the work, you are making it about yourself. And then you are being entitled, and then you are going to tell yourself, ah, the world is against me, they hate nothing, I'm poor, my parents this. 
What have you done with what you have? What is in your hands? That's also how you find your purpose. So all my years in uni, like when I was doing all these things, I was making some money on the side, but it wasn't even about the money. So by in 2005, that was when I did my first professional gig. In 2005, you know, I was still confused. You know, I was in my second year, you know, and then I went for an audition. No, I didn't go for an audition. My friend was in a play, a stage play. It was a two-man play, and I used to follow him for rehearsals. And somehow, some way, he was unhappy. He was older than me. He had been acting for a while. He was unhappy with the production and didn't go through with it. And it was a play called A Husband's Wife. It was a, no, it was all I want for Christmas. And somehow he ended up not doing it. But then there was somebody who was working at it who knew me from church. I said, oh, Lala, I want to do a play all I want for Christmas. About this time in 2005, funny enough, and, and then, because I was singing, he knew I could sing. So he was more like, the play requires a singer. So acting wasn't really, you know. Long story short, I did it. Even though the person promised me money, I never got paid. I wore my own clothes. I did, you know, I did that play in December 2005. It was my first professional job. And when I did that play, I was like, yes, this is it. It just, you know, the where I felt, the build up, I just knew that this was going to be the pathway. Now I have been spending some time praying and, you know, my ear gates were open, my eye gates, you know, I was more sensitive. So if something, and you know, when you're working with God, you have to believe that he is. So you cannot be praying something and not believe that God is. So if, for example, I've been praying that God help me, show me this. So I do that play and I see how it makes me feel. There was no money involved, but I found a lot of fulfillment from it. I was happy. Rehearsal was far away. When I finished my lectures, I would go for rehearsal. I would go on Sundays. Like, they didn't pay me. I would bring costumes. I would, you know? So I knew that I liked it, and I had been praying. So for me, it merged. And I was going to trust. And you can't work with God and not trust, because not everything is tangible. And as you work with God, you re you, 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 you're training you know, your muscle. There's a scripture that says that strong meat belongs to those, I, I don't remember it, who, you know, by, by constantly, somebody's like, by constantly hearing and, you know, you're practicing. So you start to now, you know, eat strong meat. I think it's somewhere in Hebrews. Anyways, so I knew, I loved how I felt on that stage. And I knew that, okay, this would be the leg in. And that was 2005. Somebody saw me doing that play. And in 2006, I was still an undergraduate, asked me to come and do another two-man play called The Husband's Wife. This one was at Peck Theatre. Peck Theatre doesn't exist now. It used to be in Vegas Island, um, like behind the Mewson Center. At Peck Theatre, A Husband's Wife. Rehearsals were in Omole. At that time, Omole Phase 2 was really far. I lived in Surule with my parents. Um, Unilab was in Yaba, Akoka. I might, I'll beg my mommy for transports because they were not paying me. They promised to pay me or they did not pay me. I beg my mommy for transports. I'll pack all the clothes in the house. Me again, I was, you know. Now, at this point, I was also exhibiting traits of a producer. But I didn't even know, right? But it, there was also, by the way, a spirit of excellence. As Christians, you have to be excellent. When you are a Christian, I do not It's not allowed. I don't even, I cannot stand it when Christians are entitled because of faith. And then, I'm just like, you're not exhibiting the DNA of the one who, who, who is your master. So maybe you're not fully submitted to the Holy Spirit. Maybe we need to take you to the reverse class first. You have to be excellent. So, I mean, it doesn't, it, it, don't think of it as, oh, you need all the money and all. No, what are you doing with what you have? I can't listen, I've learned it. Doing much with little. You have to be able to do much with little. And so, that play, a husband's wife. In fact, for the longest time, I used to drag the, the producer director. And he never, to today, he never paid me. But look at me. Do you know if I mention the name, don't even know his name. It doesn't matter. So, we did a husband's wife. I went for a rehearsal every time. And my parents were, they were looking at me for me. What's wrong with this deal? This thing is a hobby. And I really, I'm grateful for the parents that I have because, I mean, for a while they didn't understand it, but you know, just being the best parents that they could be. So, my mommy will give me transport money. I'll tell her that, don't worry, mommy, they're going to pay me. 
But uh, Americans will come and watch. They will come every time. They came to the one the year before. They came to this one. So this one too, I did costume. They didn't ask me to do it. What are you going to wear on that? <laughs> but wear this top, this thing. I wear this one, this one. Don't worry. I'll, the person is even uh, me. I'm saying don't worry. Now I know. I'm like, why would I tell the person not to worry? It was the person's job, <laughs> you know. When I did a husband's wife in 2006. So that was now to adult too, right? Professionally, not in church, not for games, serious work, right? So I was like, great. And then in 2007, which was my final year, I went for another audition. By this time I knew I wanted to, I wanted to submit myself to theater. Look, another lesson is you always have to say yes to the process. Whatever the process is, you must say yes to the process. And so I went for an audition in June, June 2007 at where you now know as Terra Culture, right? Plays were not happening at Terra Culture at the time. And then somebody then, my then boss, Wole who wanted to do a season of Wole Inca plays in July 2007 because Wole Inca's birthday is in July. And I went there for the, in fact, I thought I was going to go to church like Sunday morning, but I dressed up, I got there, I was the first, I was at the gates, sitting with the security man. I didn't even know. The yoga. When he came, I'm like, oh hi, I'm here for the, the owner of the place. I was so rude, but it's okay. I was bored, no, not rude. <laughs> Anyways, long story short, I did that audition. I got cast in the season of Olesho in Capilis, and that's how I started doing plays every Sunday. I did it for two and a half years. I graduated that year from Unilag, but I had to make a decision. So because I knew this was my purpose, was I still taking my time yet? Was I also an undergraduate? Yes, I'm doing, you know, your parents, your family, like, what are you doing? And I said to her, I said, you see, this insurance is temporary. This performing arts is my forever. So what I will promise you is I will fail at school, but I'm not going to drop this one. So it, it meant that it took a lot of my time. I didn't have a life as it were, you know. A lot of things suffered, relationship, a lot of things actually suffered. And so sometimes you hear this thing, but you don't know what sacrifices have happened. You have to be ready for the sacrifices. And at the stages that you are, I guess the question is, what are the sacrifices that I'm making? And are they worth it, right? At that time, my relationship destroyed. But I was also young. When I look back now, I didn't really need that relationship. But why did the relationship destroy? Because I, was, I had found myself. I was spending more time with my passion, right? So I started to do those plays. And I'll say the rest is history. And I think you want to take questions, right? Not yet. Awesome. Okay, so how, how many more minutes for me to run up? Okay. And so I would say the rest is history from when I did those plays, you know, consistently. And one other thing I said, you know, I, I spoke about solving problems, right? When you heard me talking, I said, oh, I was teaching. I never allowed myself to be idle. It didn't matter that the big thing had not come. Right? Why is it here that is faithful with little will be faithful with much? So even there were times I created opportunities. I created something called Open My Theatre. And why did I create Open My Theatre? And I'm rounding up with this. I found that a lot of actors were not being seen. Like people will say, I'm a new actor, but how do they get to be seen? Sometimes not everybody gets a chance to go to an audition. Not everybody um, gets picked as an auditions are really a dime a dozen, right? Trust me, I did my rounds with the auditions where and, you know, I leave my house at 4 a.m. and get to the audition, take on kind of, Look, I've done it all on a bag of chips. This person I'm standing here today, I've been there, done that, taken by, changed my clothes, begged. I've done it all. It doesn't really look like it, but I have. And so, I was like, and then I used to teach, and I was like, my students are not even, they don't know what to do with their, their nervousness. Like, you're a new actor, you get on the stage, you're shy, you know. And so I thought to myself, how can I solve this problem? This was me, who wasn't, not like I was rich or anything. So I created Open My Theatre as a platform for actors, new people, to perform, and it was free. So what I would do is I would invite directors, producers, writers to come and watch and shop for talent. I used to call it Open My Theatre was a one-stop shop for talent. Of course, by the way, I'm praying about all these things. Though. I'm spending time in the spirit sorting these things out, right, in my secret place. But I was never going to compromise on excellence. So I would do publicity for those things. I would design posters. I would do like photo shoots. And those shows were free. I would have 
had a video crew, like a camera crew, so we would, we would, we would record those sessions and put them on YouTube. I was providing new actors with showreel because an actor wants to apply for a job, they say submit your showreel. But you've never worked before, so how do you have a showreel? You have to create one. So I was helping people create that. And what that did was, it suddenly started to position me as a captain of my industry. Suddenly people were like, oh, I'm looking for talent, talk to Nala. Because I was, I had created this thing out of a problem that I, I was facing. And I wasn't making money. Guys, I was using my savings. Let me tell you, the photographers, and then in Unilag, that's why I said those four years, what the photographers I used to work with, GD would require one of the biggest wedding photographers today. GD would come and say, let's go, Lala. These people were not collecting money from me. But every time I put out their pictures, I would credit them. I would shout about them. Buy your Mogori O, who photographs the president today? was doing that. When the campaign for the president was going to start, the people that were doing the campaign came to me and said, where is the boy that used to take your pictures for Open My Theater? That's how he got there. He didn't get money. But look, those Open My Theater pictures were mad. And they were excellent. And they, these are photographers. Till today, I can call them at any time, right? But I'm saying that the, the, the price you have to serve, you have to solve problems. You have to use what you have and do much with little. Say yes to the process and you have to keep working with God. Thank you so much.